Hello. So Gabe and Fabio, do you, are you guys new to the group? Hello. Hello. Hi, yeah, Fabio speaking. Yes. Is, is this your first time on the call? Yes, it's my first time. Excellent. So I just pasted a link to the agenda into the chat. If you mm -hmm. if you want, go ahead and add your name to the list of attendees. That way we can we can keep track of you and and uh, and know you know what company you're from and all that good stuff. Sure, I'll do. Thanks a lot. Okay, Gabe, are you on the call? Okay, I guess Gabe stepped away. Hey, Matt. Hey, Doug. How's it going? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize that was a funny question. <laughs> Just many threads going all at once. Yeah. Have you done that, uh, or, or were you were you scheduled to do the uh, the video recording thing? I did uh, the open source week. Yeah. Did you do that already? Yeah, I presented yesterday at twelve thirty central. Okay. That's cool. Hey, Clemens. Hello. Here we go. Hello, Baram. Baram, are you there? Yes, can you hear me? Barely. You're very, very faint, but I got you recorded. Thank you. Uh, sorry. <laughs> and Gabe, are you uh, online yet? Okay. All right, let's see. Um, Dan, which Dan is that? We have more than one in this group, I believe. Mark, you there? Can you guys actually hear me? I, I can hear you, Doug. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> yes, that works. I don't like being ignored. <laughs> <laughs> um, Austin, are you there? I'm here. All right, cool. Let's see. Chat, I think I see you, so that's good enough. Okay. Um, let's see. <clears throat> and this, um, Fabio, I've heard before. Mark, are you there? Okay, let's do Dan Barker. Dan, are you there? Yes. Okay. And do, do, do Dan Crook or Daniel Crook? Yep, Daniel Crook's here. All right. Uh, uh, it's Mark. Hey, Mark. All right, thank you. Um, but, but let's see who else we got. David Lyle. Yes, I'm here. Excellent. How about Alex Debris? Yep, I'm here. Excellent. Jim Curtis? Yes. Cool, thank you. Uh, da, da, do, 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 do. Let's see who else we got. Emily. Yes, I'm here in place of the uh, Ben Hartshorn from Honeycomb. Got it, thank you. Thanks. But um, Rupak, I apologize, I apologize if I'm butchering that. No, it's fine, I I'm here. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, okay, I know I'm gonna butcher this one. Um, Yom or Vom, V-Y-O-M? Are you there? Yeah, this is Vom here from Oracle. Excellent, thank you. All right, Rachel Myers. Yeah, I'm here and I also have Sarah Allen and Thomas. With Hello, me. this is Sarah. Hey Sarah, hey Thomas, I gotcha. How about Chris Borchers? Yep, I'm here. All right. How about Klaus? Klaus? Yes, I'm here. Yeah. Excellent. Okay, gotcha. Whoops. I don't know. This is doing some funky stuff. Okay. Dan Rosanova. Can you hear me? Yes. Are you the same Dan that I was talking to earlier about? Oh, yeah, you may be. I think the single Dan vanished. That must be you. Okay. Let's see. So 
there anybody who has not been registered yet attendance wise? Oh wait, there's one. Um, Shrikanth? Also, Yaron joined, Doug. Okay. Yaron, uh, not Yaron, uh, Shrikanth, are you there? Yes. <clears throat> Excellent. Mm -hmm. Yep, I, I got you now. Uh, Gabrielle, are you there? And Kathy? Kathy, are you there? Okay, I guess not yet. I think we're just missing those two. Oh, wait a minute. Stanley, are you there? Oh, can you hear me? Yes, who, which one is that? Is that Stanley? Yep, that's Stanley. Excellent. Thank are you. you new to the call or am I just not remembering you from last time? No, nope, I'm new to the call. All right, which company are you with? Uh, I'm with Viom and uh, Oracle. Oracle, got it. Okay, thank you. Right, uh, Shikan, Shikan is also with uh, Oracle. <clears throat> Thank you. Hey, you go, go ahead and add your company affiliation if you're relatively new to the call, that way we can get that in there. I appreciate that. Actually, let me paste the link to the uh, thing again. Okay, I have Gabe uh, through the chat. He said he doesn't have the mic right now, which is fine. Um, Kathy, are you there? Yes, me here. Excellent. Thank you. All right, anybody, we're going to start in just a sec here. So is there anybody on the call whose attendance has not been recorded yet? I'm looking through the list, I think. Oops. Yeah, oh, Chris. Thing. I'm sorry, who's that? Danish from serverless. Okay, hold on a sec. You're near the top. Oh, wait. Nope, you're not near the top. Oh, uh, Chris Anacek, are you there? Okay, hold on a sec. Oops, let's do this. <laughs> Too many people typing. All right, tell you what, we'll go ahead and get started and finish this up later on. All right, let's jump right into it. Um, quickly, just to touch on one of the outstanding action items. Um, Austin, would you like to talk to the question or issue you have around the website? So I think we can resolve that relatively quickly. Sure. The Linux Foundation has completed the domain transfer. They are now the owners of cloudevents.io and .org. However, the DNS information got a bit messed up in the process, so those domains don't currently resolve to anything. Um, and they were previously linked to a Squarespace website. At the same time, in the repository, we've been investigating just uh, launching our own website, just hosted on GitHub. Um, I'm thinking instead of reaching out to the Linux Foundation and asking them to adjust the uh, DNS information, instead, they should just point it to our, our GitHub website. Um, and the GitHub website is currently deployed, uh, thanks to Mr. Dan Barker. He did a great job of getting this up and running. Um, I think we should take a look at it. It doesn't have to be perfect by any means, uh, but I think it's better than nothing right now. And we could quickly iterate on the website to, uh, to refine it. Um, shortly after we just fix the domain issue. Okay. Is there any questions about that? Where's the website hosted? And are we going to move it to the cloud event org? Yes, we're trying to do that right now. The, the previous website was just made via Squarespace. Um, now we've, we're kind of rolling our own. That's going to be hosted on GitHub via, I can't remember what it's called, GitHub Pages or something. Um, so we're thinking about just using that. Okay, sorry, I didn't follow, but I've seen the notes now. Thank you. Okay, yeah, so then we do need to move it to, we need to move it to the uh, uh, Cloud Events org. Um, yep. has permissions to do that, but uh, I can help with that too at some point. So I believe the overall question here for the group is, is everybody okay with using, uh, what is it, Dan, Dan Barker? Dan Barker's current version of the website as the starting point going forward, assuming we'll just make iterations going uh, as you as you progress. Is that right, uh, Austin? Correct. Okay. Any questions or concerns about that? Because something's better than nothing. Um, <laughs> the only, I mean, I'm all for like starting somewhere. I just want to point out that we have this consistent, almost every week people get confused between what we're talking about in events and like just time series data, some people config, configure events like message, anything async on the internet seems to be an event. And um, 
And so, so I think like starting with something, but like making big noise about it, we should figure out how to clarify that in this landing page. I totally agree. I think uh, right now we're just deciding whether or not to adopt GitHub pages to host the website. Um, and then we could, you know, the immediate next conversation is to discuss content. What needs to be on that website and what doesn't need to be on that website? Right. So I think start, yeah, let's get started. Start with this content. We'll iterate. Yeah, so Austin, where is the actual source code for website going to be hosted? Are we going to create a new repo within our Git repo or someplace else? Okay. Oh, I think, I think it should absolutely be within the cloud events uh, org. Um, you know, however that's structured, I don't really have any strong opinions. Maybe okay. it's a separate okay. story. Okay, that's fine. I just want to make sure I understood the process, and that's fine. We'll work offline to set up the appropriate links between GitHub pages and, our, and, a, and a new repo for us. We should make that an action item right now. Um, if Dan could, yeah, if we, if we agree to make another repository, Dan could transfer, or we could just copy over Dan's work, and then we'll just agree to work off that uh, and focus on content there. Yep. And there's a, just some particulars about how you set it up with GitHub pages that I can uh, run through once we transfer it over. Okay, so Dan, can I sign you with the action line to figure out the appropriate people to talk to to get all that set up? I, I suspect it might be Chris Anacek. Yeah, uh, I, I okay. can help. Okay, thank you, Chris. All right, so is there any objection then with moving forward with that stated plan of using the current version of the website that Dan has? and then creating the appropriate repos so that GitHub pages can host it. And then we can iterate on that through PRs. Going once. Done. Excellent. Thank you, guys. And thank, right. you, and thank you, Dan, for getting started on that uh, website. It's really appreciated. Yes. Definitely. Thank you, Dan. All right, moving forward. Um, next item, uh, the face-to-face -face at KubeCon. So we took a poll to see who was going to be able to be uh, in attendance at a face-to-face. -face. And I believe we have seven people who have said yes. Um, I'd like to go, f I'd like to suggest that we go forward with the face-to-face, -face. whether we decide it's sort of a, an official meeting in terms of actually resolving PRs and stuff, I think it's still uh, to be determined. Um, I'm not quite sure how we determine whether we have quorum or not, but I'd at least like to try to get together to discuss any issues that are lingering at the time that may benefit from a face-to-face -face discussion. So is there any objection with us moving forward with the face-to-face, -face, given we have at least seven people who are gonna be attending? Uh, one thing we should discuss real quick is, I think we'll be in a good position, um, if we keep making great progress, to really publicize this event at Cloud Native Con Europe. And we'll have the website up, hopefully we'll have like a a more solid version of the specification. Um, and if we're able to reach, reach those goals, would it be more valuable to, or something we should do in addition to the face-to-face, -to -face, to have some sort of open house? We could sort of connect with people who are just expressing interest, just learning about this for the first time, and they want to come and ask us questions and figure out how to get involved. That sounds really good. Um, I'm wondering whether we should incorporate that into this face-to-face -face or try to find a time during the, uh, during the day. I'm not sure if they have open house type of things at KubeCon yet. Is it, might be any birds of a feather or something like that? Okay. Yeah, they, they do have something like that. I think it's called yeah. birds of a feather. Birds of a feather, okay. Tell you what, I will take the action item then to find out if we can get a birds of a feather slash, slash open house kind of thing. Uh, the, actually, I guess I should ask, is there any objection to me going off and see if we can set up a birds of a feather to uh, answer questions from the community? We, we just have to make sure we have our stuff together <laughs> before then. <laughs> always, that's always true. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, this, this, would be, this would be a great uh, uh, time to have something that's already presentable. That would be good. I, I like putting the pressure on us, yes. Basically strategizing, yeah. using that meeting to strategize where we go from here, but we should have it here. Yeah, agreed. Yeah. And we'll, 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 we'll solidify exactly what here is as we get closer. But yes, I like, I like the idea of having pressure on us to move and get something in place for that. Conference-driven development. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, hold on a minute. So is there any then objection to me going forward trying to get a birds of a feather set up at KubeCon and the face-to-face? -face? This is Rachel. I don't have an objection to the birds of a feather, but I do want to know like what the goal of the face-to-face -face is. Like I don't want to exclude people who aren't face-to-face, -face, but I'm excited to like meet more of the groups from like more of the people from this group. So if we could like, if we could 
iron out what our goals for the face-to-face -face would be, that would be great for me. Yes, I, I agree. I, and that was, that's what I kind of was alluded to earlier when I said, at some point before the face-to-face, -face, we'll have to decide, for example, whether it's an official meeting where we can actually approve PRs or not. Because to be honest, if we only have seven people, I'm not sure that's enough of a quorum to say, yes, we're going to approve PRs. So then we may decide, okay, the agenda is just going to be, let's see if we can hash through some of the open issues at the time to see if we can leverage the face-to-face -face time to get better design discussions going. And that may be all it is, is just uh, uh, increased communicate or another communication channel, but not necessarily an official uh, like a PR approving meeting. We'll have to decide as we get closer though. Does that make sense, Rachel? Yeah, that does make sense. That makes sense. So basically, I'll, we'll, we'll, say we'll get an agenda going before the face-to-face -face so everybody can agree on that beforehand. All right, any other comments or questions? Uh, Doug, I missed the poll regarding the face-to-face. -face. I don't know where that was, um, but I didn't see it. I'll definitely be there. And okay. I, I'm just wondering if other people missed it too. And yeah, it, was, I, it was in Slack and I just pasted it to uh, chat then. Okay. Yeah, in Slack. I thought I sent an email too. If I didn't, I apologize. I meant to. Um, but yeah, it's obviously not too late to add your name there. So just go ahead and the link is also in the agenda. Got it. And one other thing I want to raise right now um, is that if we go, uh, if at Cloud Native Con Europe, we start publicizing this and promoting this effort, um, I know that there are a lot of large companies who have been collaborating on the specification. And I'm just curious how these large companies would like to characterize their involvement in this effort. Not that we have to figure this out right now, not that we're asking them to officially endorse this, uh, but if they could give us some um, some insight into how you know we should characterize their involvement, um, that would be that would be really helpful before you know before we do any type of press push um, around Cloud Native Con. So yeah, I think that we really have to get to a point where we feel like the specification could actually be useful. Mm -hmm. I think we, I, I believe we're going to get there, but I don't believe we're there now. And so until we are at that point, it's really hard to um, make plans. Makes total sense. Um, I'm trying to figure out the best way to characterize that or the, the next steps on your suggestion there, Austin, because I think it's a good one. Is that just something, well, I, I don't think GitHub issues appropriate to track that necessarily. It may be more of a question of uh, reminding representatives on the call to sort of put forward some sort of statement or something. Is that what, statement in terms of what, what they feel comfortable people saying about their involvement and then we need to just sort of gather that someplace in like the Google Doc? What kind of thing are you thinking of here? I have a very specific proposal in the contributors list mm -hmm. um, that seems to be like have gotten a lot of positive responses um, and I didn't like really move forward with finding that because I wasn't sure. I mean it just seemed to be lower priority than other things but that could be my intent with that was so that instead of just being um, random people on Slack who may or may not match up with GitHub names. It was, it was sort of helpful to understand what people were doing with the spec, which helps sort of understand people's comments and, and create like shared understanding of what we're all trying to achieve. And so um, I, I pulled that contributors list initially from the doc um, that, that Austin had put together. And then, um, and then people added in like, oh, please add me. And so that could be a way that, you know, then people can do PRs if they want to update how the, the context for their contributions. So I'm not, okay, so I think there's two different discussions there. There's the discussion of how do we list contributors or authors of the specification? I think that's one discussion. And I thought that's what your PR was more focused on. The second part of the discussion seems to be more about how are people going to use a spec or how do they want the participation of, uh, 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 denoted or you know what, what do they want said about their participation in the working group and I don't think that's appropriate to go into the spec itself um, well, this is a, it's in the spec repository to give context for people who are so there's different kinds of contributions to the spec like it's not all wordsmithing right all the contributions don't necessarily come in a form of a github pull request not to mention that some of the contributions came before this repo existed and so the idea is that people could contribute um, a statement about their planned usage of the spec, right, as a way of contributing to the effort, right, and that that, contribu that contribution list would acknowledge the body of people who are moving forward with this or participating in it. 
Okay, can I suggest that we open an issue that up to discuss this because I don't want to necessarily dive too deep on this one right here, but I think Austin, your original proposal about trying to figure out what each company wants to say about the participation is a good one. We just need to figure out the best way to gather that information and then have it someplace available so people won't be making stuff up about other companies. Um, so Austin, I think you have a particular concern about like PR around the event and maybe you could add that to the roadmap because I, I think that we need to hit a milestone first and then have that conversation. So maybe if it's on the roadmap at an appropriate milestone, that might be a good way to address that. Yeah, um, absolutely. And the roadmap doesn't have any dates on it. And this is definitely a, a date focused thing. Um, but, but let me take it as an action item. I, I think you brought up actually a good point, Sarah. I, I believe that there is a, um, there's a middle ground here for, for these companies. Uh, and that is like something in between, there's something less than official endorsement. Like it, it's kind of a, more of a casual acknowledgement that they're, they're collaborating on this effort mm -hmm. and hopefully their respective companies get some points for being, you know, community focused, uh, good community focused citizens. Um, but I think, you know, when I characterize this in the context of how do we do, how do we describe this um, within the context of PR around KubeCon or Cloud Native Con, I think this actually just touches on the larger issue that that contributors list is meant to solve. It's like, what, how do we characterize these contributors and how can we do this in a way that's kind of informal and not perceived as an official endorsement? I think if we could just solve that problem, then we could kind of use that characterization when we go to take this to the press. And that is, hey, these are contributors. Um, they're not officially endorsing this project. We've just agreed to informally kind of collaborate on this and, and see where it goes. Um, and maybe we could use that uh, to guide our PR efforts. Potentially, but I'll figure out how to write this up somewhere and run it by everyone um, to, see, to get their thoughts because I know this is kind of a sensitive subject for a lot of people. Yeah, so Austin, in the notes, I, I said I gave you an action item, but I didn't quite know what to write there. So can you just put into words what you just said into the agenda so that it's documented? Sure thing. Okay, thank you. All right. I have, a, I have a question about the logistics here for the KubeCon. Is, is a paid registration required to attend that meeting? Uh, um, excellent at, question. I'll find out. Yeah. At the moment, yes, but we could see what we could do um, to, to help with folks that uh, are planning to be there but not attending the event officially. <laughs> yeah, because it is after hours, so you should be able to sneak in fairly easily. Yeah, but... <laughs> People should have some degree of certainty that they can sneak in. <laughs> <laughs> well, with Chris on the call, we'll make it happen. If it's after hours, it, I wouldn't worry about it too much. Yeah, asking someone will help. Asking someone with, with some powers. So Chris, can you take an action to find out if people need money or to pass to get in? Yep. Okay. If it, we'll do. If it's after hours, I, I will tell you right now that, it, that it's not a problem. Okay. Okay. Chris will check, we'll check on that. All right. Any last questions? All right, let's get to some fun stuff. Uh, two PRs that we should be able to go fairly quickly through. First of all, Dan Khan opened a PR just to add a, an Apache 2 license. Hopefully this is non-controversial. Any questions or concerns about adding an Apache 2 license file to our repo for the spec? Going once, done. All right, cool. Now, last week I took an action item to find some place to play or just to upload uh, documents or presentations that people might give during uh, meetings. And so what I ended up doing was creating a directory called Share, where people will be able to upload or open PRs to upload presentations, not just for meetings, but just basically I thought, why not just open it up to any document that you just may want to share with the group at large, whether it's a presentation you gave someplace else or something else is completely up to you. Um, but so basically I, the point here is I created a shared directory and uploaded the two presentations that were given last week and a short little readme telling people how to do PRs to add new documents to this. Um, having the document in here has it gives it no official standing <laughs> within the working group. It's just a place to share information. Any questions or comments on that? This is Rachel. I think it's great. And we should merge this ASAP. All right. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Uh, how do you want us to link any sort of like uh, Google Sheets or other like 
non-binary material? That's a good question. I guess what we could do is do a PR where, um, oh, wait a minute. Yeah, we don't actually have that in here. Uh, I'll tell you what, um, good. what Just I can do is the... keep... Go ahead, uh, sorry. Well, I was, I was gonna say, I can, I can create another PR to modify the readme a little to say, not uploadable things, here's a spot to, uh, to add links or references to places, someplace, you know, someplace else, that way people can do a PR against the readme to add their stuff. Yeah, maybe if the readme also was an index, it could, the index could contain things outside of the repos. That's exactly what I would do. That's, we, we do that in another uh, repo in CNCF for presentations, so totally okay. plus one to that, Sarah. Okay, so I'll tell you what, are people okay with me doing that in a follow-on PR? That way we can at least get the, the folder up there quickly? Yeah. Okay. So I'll tell you what, let me just make some notes here. Um, to do. All right, cool. Any objection then to approving this PR? So we can move forward with that. All right, cool. Two easy ones done. Thank you guys very much. All right, so back to the presentations or discussions around what is source. Now, um, on last week's call, we ended with Euron uh, f finishing up his presentation, but because he ran out of time, I felt a little bad that we didn't really get a chance for people to ask any questions in case they had any. So let's just, without Euron going back to his presentation again, let's at least open the floor up and ask, are there any questions or comments for Euron based upon what he presented last week? My, my comment is that I really enjoyed the design goals uh, that Sarah has contributed. And I do believe as we look at every other aspect of this effort, that first we should settle on those design goals and that will really kind of help rein in our focus um, and kind of get aligned and then look at these, all these other presentations and descriptions of things just from a similar perspective. Okay, so we do have yeah. Sarah's design goals next on the agenda after this after the source stuff. So we are definitely going to do that, and I don't think we're going to resolve. So, the first so Doug, uh, I think a related discussion is uh, sort of what are we really defining? Because uh, are we defining the event or sort of the the way to transfer an event where which doesn't need to understand the event itself? And I think that leads to the points about source and source ID and event type, etc. Because some of the examples that contain just as an example the bucket name the, and the file name that was sent in the S3 uh, you know, event as a source, I would categorize something like that as specific to a class of event, you know, because there may be another event that doesn't relate to an S3 bucket and a file. So I, I think we, the first thing we need to define is what are we trying to define? Is it a way to transfer events or are we trying to define the events themselves? Because I don't think there is enough clarity. I would like to minimize the amount of metadata that we're uh, sort of putting in context and anything that's sort of event specific will be defined in the event in the event schema. Okay, so I'm going to have to ask that we, I, I'm not saying we shouldn't discuss that. I'm just trying to ask for, uh, stay on topic for right now. And I want to get through the discussions around what is source first, then get to Sarah's draft design goals. And then we can have a discussion about what you were just talking about, Yaron, is you know, are we talking about just the shape of the event or other things around it like transmitting the event? Because that is a topic on the agenda and I want to get to that just in a timely fashion. So first, let's focus just on my original question. Are well, there any questions? I think, the, I think the issue is, is that the discussion around source is informed by what we're actually trying to achieve. I, I understand. And Sarah, I'm, I'm not trying to, right. to, 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 to sidetrack that. It's just we have to have time for everybody to give the presentation on what is source. And so I want to focus on, are there any questions for Euron's or related to Euron's proposal so that we can move forward and get to Kathy and your proposal or your, 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 your presentations. This is Rachel. I think that we agree that the, that what we need to do is define what we're trying to define. We all, I think we all agree on that. And so we're with Euron. I, I, okay. I'm, we, I'm, like we can we can like we can wait on that. We're happy to wait on that, but we we just want to like tell you on yes, we agree. Yeah, I, I think I, I think everybody agrees. We need to define what we're defining. I think that's true. <laughs> right. Okay. So. So I'm, so I'm not hearing anybody necessarily raise any questions for you on based upon his presentation. So let's move forward now, so we can get through the other two presentations that we have on tar, or on schedule. So Kathy, 
Do you want to walk through your presentation? Yes. Okay. Do you want to share your screen or do you want me to, to display the doc? How would you want to? Just, oh, okay. So let me, let me, oh, permission. Okay. Let me get the permission. Okay. Hold on. Uh, let, let me quickly do this. Uh, I think, you know, um, um, hold on. Sorry. How should I do this? If you want, you can just share your screen. That's possible too. I can stop. Oh, sharing. okay. Maybe I just share my screen then. Okay. okay. So let me get my uh, presentation out. Just a second. Okay. Okay, so mm, just a second. So you give me um, to share the screen. Let me see. If you look at the bottom of the Zoom window, I should say. Oh, yeah. Screen. Yeah. Okay, let me do it. Hold on. Share screen. Can you see my screen? Not yet. Hold on. Oh, here. Yeah. There we go. Now we see it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Let me do the slideshow. Um, so if you can try to try to get through it in about five minutes or so, if possible. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um. Somehow this. Okay. So can you see it now? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I, I think, you know, I just gave an example of, you know, um, the situation, you know, how we should define the source. Um, so here's an example of the burglary uh, detection uh, example. It's a whole monitoring uh, case. Like for example, there will be two events, like one event is like a, a sensor detect a motion. And another event is a door or window open event. And this event will go through, you know, for example, the motion event will trigger um, maybe a picture or video uh, clip to be stored into uh, the cloud storage. And then that will trigger a, a notification to a service platform, which will trigger a, a function, a service function to do the burglary analysis. Similarly, similarly you know, the window open event will trigger maybe a cloud messaging system um, to send uh, another message to the, uh, or another event to the service platform, which will also trigger a function. So now we have this, so this, this analysis will based on the two events, but we can see that the event, you know, originally originated from a, a, a home sensor. And then, you know, uh, from a serverless platform point of view, it looks like it's originated from a uh, cloud storage or the cloud messaging system. And uh, so here is, you know, it could also, um, the event from the original originating side, originating source could also travel through some middleware device. So how we should define the event source and source type and source ID and event type. I think currently our specification uh, is not very um, clear about this. Uh, I'm not um, going to um, um, propose just, you know, say what is a source. Um, and this is open for discussion, you know, should we put the source, should we define the source as a, um, the sensor from the, you know, for example, in this case at the home, or should we define the source as a, um, the cloud storage or cloud messaging system which you know interface directly with the service platform. That's my question. Um, I don't know what other people think. I'm thinking maybe the, uh, I think the source should be the from the service platform point of view should be the cloud storage or the cloud messaging system, not any middleware devices or the source. But the information, the uh, event information itself, should have a way to. Um, to identify the, um, like, you know, the, how to say it, the original, um, um, original event, original, the sensor information, sensor uh, information, the sensor data there. That's my, my thought. I don't know what other people think about this. 
Yeah, I, I agree. That's what I was saying before, is that if we're starting to go inside into the sensor itself, each sensor will have a different metadata and it will be very ambiguous and it will take us five years to define it. I think we need to just define sort of what they call the envelope, which is there is the guy reporting the event and here's the schema of what you reported. You want more details? Go inside into the event through the schema. And we can define potentially a few standard schemas that are not specific to one vendor going forward, but those could be in a different scope. Yeah, but just uh, just take this as, as an example. I think there are some other similar you know, uh, use cases on um, that we are going to face the same problem. You know, So what is this event source? Um, we have to have a clear, you know, definition or description of that, you know, spec, so that people can be very clear, oh, the source means the cloud storage or the cloud messaging system or other, you know, um, component or other component that interface directly with a service platform, which will trigger a function um, action. Or, you know, you know, the source will be, oh, it's the sensors or whatever, the, the origin and the really, you know, originate inside. But if from current description of our spec, I think it's not clear, you know, different people can interpret it different way. That's why I think we are, have so, many, so much discussion. So many discussions, you know, which, you know, people are, you know, kind of like, uh, cannot sync up very well. Also, there's a source type that depends how we define the event source and then, you know, how we define the source type, right? Um, source ID and the, also event type, all these we have to, I, I think, you know, when I read our spec, I don't think it's very um, clear or very, you know, what was that referred to? Or whether there, the, some people might think there's some duplication here. Yeah, I think that's part of the discussion of what we're trying to sort of uh, clarify. So I think, I think the points you raised, Kathy, are very important that we need to address. Yeah. So, so I think if we are talking about this um, event source or source type, or whatever, from service point of view, uh, my take is the event source should be the, um, like in this example, should be the cloud storage or the cloud messaging system, which, you know, interact directly with the service platform to send us, I mean, to send that trigger or uh, uh, event to that service platform. If we go this way, then, you know, the source type, we can define, you know, different source type, right? There's a story source type, there's a messaging source type, there's a video streaming source type, you know, there are like, you know, other source types, right? We can define. But why do we, why do we need to define the source types? Um, I think, you know, the different source type we define will have different uh, schema or I, I'm not sure that schema also is not very clearly defined. Um, but what I mean by that is, you know, different source type, the message, the information um, involved in that event will be different. Right. But that's why we have schema. That's why I'm saying if so, we have so storage identity uh, source resource reporting source resource and we have a schema then we can we know where it came from and we know uh, how to decipher the message so so that's why you need a source type because different source type is going to have different schema no, but you have a schema name you have a schema name field in the proposal oh then that that's yeah that, that's fine you know as long as we you know, but you can have, you know, so source type out of, outside the schema too, you know, like for example, your different source type, for example, for storage, the storage is going to have different schema, different fields or different metadata information, right? For example, it's going to have like maybe column, but if like uh, a, but yeah, a, schema, a schema is a schema, you cannot say I'm going to define a schema and uh, different people will be able to interpret the schema differently. A schema no, no, is no. Fine, uh, like a hierarchical, you know, field, field uh, structure. And I don't think that's what I'm trying to understand. Why do you care if it was sent through a storage or a streaming? If the event is a IoT sensor, uh, you know, notification, whatever. Uh, why do you care who uh, was, what is the class of the entity that reported it? So I wanted to just sort of chime in with a, a clarifying question. 
I think in this picture, um, there's three different or potentially four different sources. And it, it, for me, from my perspective, cloud storage is a very different kind of thing than a messaging system. Whereas a messaging system seems like it's transporting an event from here to there, whereas a storage is like, okay, the sensor generated an image and the storage is saying, oh, am I, did I create that image? Am I like replacing it? Like there may be like storage specific um, like events that have to do with that object being created in storage, which could be then a different semantic event than the original, like I have a sensor that did a thing, right? It's not the same as like transporting a message from here to there in my view. Right, I, I agree, Sarah, but I think that in this case, the message queue is a transport and not a source. I'm really interested in Kathy's perspective for, from her presentation. Yeah, yeah, sorry. I think you, you clarified some of my thoughts. Yeah, I, I think the, um, the, if the, if we say the source is cloud storage or cloud messaging system or any other, you know, system which interact directly with a service platform, I think different uh, sources are going to, um, when they send the event to the service platform, that event, event will have very different information carried in it. And, uh, you know, different vendor probably is, Different vendors probably will have different uh, um, different uh, ways of organizing those um, information uh, or those um, yeah I say information uh, associated with that event and okay so but the different representation that's another that's a separate issue but I think you know the key issue is different uh, um, sources the the information carried. Um, in the, I mean, from those carried um, in that event, in those events will be um, different. Yeah, well, particularly the distinction between storage, which I just interpreted to be like, um, like image storage, right? Yeah, image or videos. Yeah. Thing, which I, I don't really think of as an event originator because it's just transporting an event. Do you understand uh, that question? So the, okay. It, it, yeah, you can say it that way, but sometimes some, but you know, it depends, you know, some messaging system, for example, if there's a window open event, right, the from that sensor, um, the information or the format of that event could be different from the event uh, that's sent from this cloud messaging system, because the cloud messaging system has its own, um, how to say it, has its own way of, you know, Define of you know um, deciding what information to be put into that event and what is the format uh, of that event. Um, it would be uh, could be different. Right. Although most of the messaging systems that like I've dug into, like you can just like put a whole event in it, transport it from one place to another, and it's sort of like it's this like kind of opaque thing that gets transported. Um, if that makes sense. Can I chime in on something here really? I think we have something interesting here that I'd like to discuss just because the, the messaging system is actually a good example here because you're right that, yeah, it's usually just a, a transporter thing, but sometimes it does raise events. Like we have a messaging service that's a lot like Kafka and we let you put a time and window uh, trigger on it where we'll write events to storage rather than you having to read a stream. And so that's funny because it actually ties these two together. So you, you, when we write that file to storage, yeah, the storage might raise a storage event, but, but our messaging system actually raises a special event that is telling you where we've written this file, but it's not a, it's not a event from the storage, it's from the messaging system. So I think that, it's kind of a, the yeah, source, it's less than the trivial one. So the way to clarify it is saying the source of the event is the source, the, uh, sorry, the resource that reported the event Okay, because the messaging thing is, you know, just think about email, you're, you're getting the two in the email is not your, the email server is the guy that sent the email, which is the most basic messaging system. But if the email system is sending you a notification, then it's becoming the, the resource that reported an event. Yeah, I, I, I think that's correct. I mean, that's what I'm trying to say with ours is our intention on our event for that is you're not thinking about I mean, you're interested in the storage that was created, but you do want to know, hey, this actually came from the messaging system. 
And yes, there's storage information in the data, but that's not really relevant to. Yeah, I think Baram, you bring up a really interesting point, which is that like, it could be that the storage system is it in emitting events, but that most people of your who are using your whole system, most of the developers would, would ignore the, would not listen to the storage events because those are really like under the hood and not relevant to the, like the semantic meaning of the events. And so- yeah, and, and just so you don't blame Brahm, this is Dan, I'm just stealing his microphone right <laughs> now. Okay. Computer's not working. Okay. So, so just out of, just trying to watch the clock here a second, because there, there are two big things I want to get to on today's call. So Kathy, is, mm -hmm. there, is there anything really big that you'd like to, to say? Because we kind of need to wrap this up and let Sarah and, and Thomas do their, their, their pitch. Okay, I, I think it looks like we'll agree on the, you know, the source, the event source will be the, um, um, the, the system that you know, send and directly interact with the serverless platform, which send the event to that serverless platform, whether it's a storage or it's a messaging or it's other, you know, there are many other, you know, system to interact with the serverless platform. Uh, it's part I, of the, I it's find that, that we came to a conclusion. That Is that uh, what we agree on? Discussion of the top. So, no. Wait, so, so hold, hold on, hold on, Kathy. The, uh -huh. the point of this discussion is just to get your, your point of view across. It's not to necessarily ask the question of, do we agree on X, Y, or Z? That's going to come later. <laughs> so <laughs> okay. let's open up that rat hole right now. Yeah, so my, the, my point is, you know, I, I think the source, you know, um, it should be the um, component that interact directly with the service platform. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay, cool. Okay. So and then that, we can later uh, define, you know, once we decide on that, we can define source type, source ID, event type to see whether and and need it for that or is there any duplication for that. Right. Hey Doug, I have one quick question. I just wanted to just I'll be really quick. So yep. uh, Kathy, what is, what is your opinion of the sensors in terms of what they mean? Uh, what what is it that's so from your perspective that is not the source type, is that the event source? Okay, so uh, yeah, that's a good question. I think, you know, so that's what I said, you know, before I uh, mentioned before. So if we define the source as a cloud storage and cloud messaging system in this example, right? Other examples right. will be other things. But, you know, but that e event should have some metadata, which specify the uh, origin information of the sensor or the, what's that? Um, of the, yeah, the, the motion sensor or the door open that sensor. Um, so actually, I have some other slides which uh, bring up another issue. Yeah, I don't know whether I should. I can. No, 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 no. Okay. no let, let, let's say that because, I, like I said, we we, we we can't let this conversation yeah, last yeah, too many thanks, calls. Doug. Thanks, Doug. Thanks, thanks, Kathy. Yeah. I, just want, I just want to be clear on that. Cool. Thank okay. you. Yeah. So, Kathy, can you can you stop sharing and then? Okay. Sure. Uh, Sarah or Thomas or someone from your guys, and you want to share your screen? So yeah, I'll share. Okay, and just let you know. Um, I've been saying five minutes, but obviously we've gone further than that. Um, I, I know we're not going to go very far. So, let me, so what I want to do, Sarah, is have you guys try to wrap this part of the of the discussion up at the within ten minutes. So five minutes left, only for the sole purpose then of saying, Sarah, you have a PR out there about the design goals and now you're ready to review it. So because next call we're going to dive deep into that. Uh, yeah. I would like to be able to have a quick discussion on this call about the design goals. I would too. So if you can get this stuff done sooner. We oh, can okay. Get to Absolutely. It. I thought you were deferring it to next week. No, 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 no. I want to get to it, but I wanted, I didn't want to cut you off since, since Kathy had more than five minutes, but if you can get it all in five and then the next 10 minutes for the design, let's do it. So it's all okay. for you. Um, so can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Um, uh, so yeah, I'll move to presenting. So this is just a kind of a very high level um, how Google Cloud Functions fits into this world. You have a, um, in this example, a developer calls um, the Google API to, to um, do what we colloquially call trigger configuration, right? So you say basically say, I'm interested in a Firestore document create message and I want to connect it to my action, in this case, a Google Cloud Function that will do post to Slack. So this is the intent is when the um, when in the in the lower um, row a user which is you know maybe using a device or is down you know or there's a server that calls a Google API which is the the Cloud Firestore API um, that would then and writes to a very specific path that would then trigger a Google Cloud function that gets that notification and that data. So in this example, the source is Cloud Firestore, which is a Google service, and there are many of these. And then the um, action is Cloud 
functions and we think of the event as just describing what happened in Firestore and that, that um, data changing and then it gets transmitted to the action. Any questions about that? Nice and quick, I love it. Um, so I just wanted to show uh, you uh, uh, Oh, I'm sorry. Um, so uh, in your case, the, the, uh, it's similar to Kathy's, but it looks like you know you have an originating source coming from maybe a, a cell phone or some server to the fire store. So um, so there could be other uh, upstream events that are actually triggering the um, uh, commit or the the document create in fire store. So. So yes, however, what we're, oh, oh sorry, I'm sorry. Seems like we have a similar issue of actually finding some information about the originating um, source of the, uh, the uh, transaction or the, or the chain of events. It could be modeled that way. Our proposal is that we can set the, um, that the I mean, and in fact, our current implementation is that the Google service is the source because what, the event that we're transmitting is we have done a database mutation, which is different from a user clicked a button or a user spoke into their phone. That would be a very different event. And so I, I did prepare like sort of this contrast of um, the common eventing architecture, which is sort of loosely based on your um, your own diagrams where the source goes through some kind of relay gateway to an action. So if we wanted to consider the source being user spoke into their phone, then we could treat Firestore as a relay. However, that's not how we've modeled the, the event. And given that we're modeling the event as a database mutation, that leads us to say the source is the Google service that does that um, transaction. And so, so basically, I think there's sort of two architectures that we're mostly converse discussing. One is the sort of IoT case or the case where you've got some remote device where it relays through a number of things to the action. And then we've got, this is um, the, the other eventing architecture. This is sort of how we've imagined it happening in the open source where I could sort of loosely based on how we've imagined it happening in like something like Istio where the source might um, be able to then have some um, logic which says, okay, should I admit an event and where does it go? And then um, goes to an action. So, so kind of, I think that the, the two diagrams are don't really conflict from my perspective because the, what I, I refer to as a relay is sort of a transparent relay. Even your message probably goes through some message queue or, you know, Lambda asynchronous messages under the hood go through SQS or something like that. So that uh, relay is essentially not an entity you know, unless it report, it wants to uh, sort of proxy an event. Yeah, so that's really like this transport. Like I see these as very um, like two two details on the same theme, just like you say you're. Yeah, right. I just didn't understand in your proposal again. We listed three things around with the source, the source ID, and the source type. And in your diagrams right now, there's only a single source uh, identifier. So there is a conceptual single source. Um, I don't think we should dive into this, but I, I noted on one of the comments that of how we might map this and, and what our original thinking, where I think namespace maybe is not the right name given a bunch of the confusion, but that as written in the spec, source is an object with the properties type and ID, which I think it hasn't been clear in some of the, um, you know, people who come in you know, the last few weeks to, to give really valuable feedback. So I wanted to kind of illustrate this is one way of thinking about it. But I like the idea of having a breakout session where we can dive deep into this and really come up with a proposal about how these attributes work together. Because talking about them as individual attributes, I don't know if it is steering the conversation most effectively. Yeah, because if you look at your source ID, it's essentially schema specific because it, it talks about the actual object that was modified. So, yeah. So, um, so I don't want to dive into that. I just wanted to illustrate that I am not specifying in this the source attributes. I'm rather identifying the conceptual source. And once we agree on that, then we can talk about how to identify it by attributes. 
I think in general, if you look at all the discussions, I think we roughly have a consensus about that. Uh, the only thing is to try and, and think put, uh, put things that are belong belong to the actual event description, like you know the bucket or the file name in the event itself, and trying to minimize the amount of metadata. Because if we open the door for more metadata, everyone will come with a new idea for another uh, sort of metadata. So what I'd like to do is not dive into that discussion because I don't think we have enough clarity to actually turn it into a pull request. I think we're close, but I think we're not there yet. I have a question. Is there an objection to minimize the number of fields? I think that's the general question. So, so you're on, and everybody, let's, let's focus the discussion on questions for Sarah about their point of view. I'm yeah. limited to that. So I have, a, I have a specific question, and that is, so you're, I, what are you, what's your proposal? Because I think that wasn't clear to me and, and to also to the other folks that I'm talking to, um, is, is you're juxtaposing the common invest, event architecture to what you have here. Actually, what I'm saying is I believe these are all the same thing, mm -hmm. which is that this, there, the source defines itself by the events it emits, right? So in this picture, because the event is a database mutation, the source is Firestore, right? Okay. And so then the IoT case, right? Like whatever the event is determines its source and you may have, like what's not pictured in this first thing is that the heavy green arrow from source to action actually has a transport in between, right? So so, okay, so follow on question. So you have a, have the, the phone posts a message into, so the phone, something happens on the phone, and now you post that into, into your Firebase. Are you saying that the, the event that is now causing the action is, is happening because of Firebase, and you're effectively obscuring the original uh, event? So we have a native mobile app where the user clicks a button, there's like some kind of like graphical user interface event that I'm yeah. suggesting is not part of what we're talking about. And then the mobile app makes an API call to Firestore, which is a cloud product. And that API, you could call that an event, but I'm saying for this case, we are not modeling that as an event. That is a, a choice of the design of this system. Okay. We're modeling so, the database mutation as the event. And in that case, the originator is Firestore rather than the first model. Okay. So you're saying that's an implementation choice that you're effectively making everything an event that is uh, sourced from the database. I'm saying okay. that the, I could draw a different picture, right? That would be more like this. Yes, and then the relay would be fire. Mobile phone, and then I would have a different set of events, and we may do that in the fullness of time. But okay. I don't Thank think you. that we are going to the extent of modeling on click as a cloud event. Okay, so Sarah, I think we're gonna have to call time on this, just because I don't wanna run out of time for you to do a quick introduction of your design goals. So obviously that we're gonna continue discussions about source and stuff. Um, so you, you want to share your screen for your design goals PR and just quickly introduce that before we run out of time? Sure thing. All right, go for it. So um, what I've attempted to do is synthesize um, what I think that um, we've been talking about um, with a few, thank you um, to Clemens and Doug for chiming in on different things, but the idea being that this is not, events are often, what I'm trying to do is disambiguate what we're talking about from in the industry, people talk about asynchronous messages as events. This is more specific than any messaging system. People also talk about time series data, log events, right? Anything logged, any time series data, any metric is an event. I think those are other different specific cases of events. And what we are talking about has a event which represents a thing, that happened as a current, as, as discussed in the spec, and, um, and there is some way of um, specifying how that, how sources are bound to actions. And so I've framed the goals um, as creating interoperability so that cloud providers 
and third party tools and services can all cooperate so that we have this ecosystem of new event sources, new event consumers, and lots of tools and libraries and different things. Um, and so, um, and that the key properties of systems are this sort of source and action, which can be decoupled. And then um, the idea that there is some kind of configuration step that binds the two of these. Um, and I think based on the discussion in the last week, I've, I've pulled that out of something that would be specified and um, but included in here so that we can illustrate that such a thing exists to distinguish from general messaging systems where you're like, I have a message and I know what the destination is and I'm sending it there, which is very different from what we're talking about an event, which is a thing happened. All right, without going into deep dive because we don't have time, are there any very, very high level questions for Sarah? Okay. Not so one, one question, Sarah, if, if let's assume that the, the event is sort of submitted into a topic, for example, uh, would that topic be somewhere in the metadata, which is because it's sort of a logical endpoint that the um, event was targeted at? So I'm suggesting that the event and what I think that like so this design goal is attempting to communicate that the event does not know anything about how it would get to its destination. So it would not include the topic. However, it should be able to interoperate in a system where you could have a rule that specifies you need this topic to get to this destination or whatever your system requires to route that event would then be outside of the event and um, communicated to the source in some way. Okay. Right, but would the consumer have a way to know where, where did, was it targeted to? So I think that, that um, what the other part of this PR, and thanks for asking that, is the README where I've said that um, the uh, process, right, that we're first we're doing the common attributes and then the architectures and then how the events are transported. So my current thinking is that that comes into the how events are transported in the message envelope. But the key thing is, and we may need to address some of these in parallel in order to separate <laughs> the transport from the event. Um, but the, I think that the, that sort of, that transport question, you could say that the, the the, the consumer hears about it, um, how it got there from the transport. Okay. Anyway, I, I, I'm gonna have to call time because we are at the top of the hour. I know people have to jump over other calls, but, but next week we're gonna continue both these top hot discussions, source as well as design goals, probably design goals first and then switch back to source. But please take a look at, at, uh, at the PRs and be thinking about uh, some of the existing PRs out there for how to redesign the source stuff. But before we adjourn, I wanted to do five. Mm -hmm. David Baldwin. Uh, yes, here. And Garish. Garish, are you still there? Yes, hey, I'm here. Yeah. And back to Joe Sherman from Microsoft. OK. Thank you guys very much. And I, pray, I apologize uh, for running over. Can you over. add me as well, Doug? Louis. I'm sorry, who's that? This is Louie. Can you add me too? Yes, Louie, gotcha. I'm sorry. Thank you. Yep. Anybody else on the call who is not on the agenda? All right. Thanks, guys. I'll talk to you again next week. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Great discussion. Yep. Bye, guys.